and we're going to talk about something probably may not have heard of is called the fascia okay now this is what i call an ignored body component okay now if you look at it you know the fascia looks like this this is like it's like, it's like clumps uh, of cells uh, you know material like this and uh, they they pretty much move around like liquid crystal on a tv you know kind of it kind of it's like a jelly kind of a, not exactly a gel but it it has that kind of movement and we're going to find out why is this so ignored because probably we don't know about it but how important is it so stay tuned and we're going to find out about this little kind of unknown element in your body called the fascia what is it you know we're saying okay great names we've got all these uh you know names coming flying out of the hat but what really is it okay now it is generally made up of collagen okay but it is found quite a lot of it is found in your muscles and if you look at this diagram that you can see over here uh what you'd actually see is uh you'd see that so many parts of your muscle actually contain this fascia okay now it gives you the spring action okay so that you know when you when you move your hand like this and you bring it back you know you've got that that little spring action and it is extremely essential because it prevents uh you know it's very flexible it takes a form uh, and uh, it gives you actually a little more strength to pull your muscle back and forth <coughs> excuse me so <clears throat> not only that it helps give the body the posture and the shape now what happens when people get a little older that they start to hunch you know these are a couple of things and they hunch so low it's probably because you've had some issues with their fascia okay because it's that it's that buoyancy that needs to come back okay so it gives you a posture and shape so it's quite important and uh, they these cells migrate throughout the body okay and they lubricate they help also lubricate a lot of your muscles now this fascia is not only in your muscles it's in a lot of parts it's in your organs it's in many many levels uh you know subcutaneous and there is uh, it goes deeper and deeper okay now the problem with this and not exactly a problem it's a function of the fascia is that it gets stiff if there is a lack of movement now you'd say oh that's a bad thing no the body does require it because it reacts the fascia reacts to the environment and let's say you're lying down on a couch and you're probably reading a magazine and you're kind of still you're just holding the magazine now the fascia allows your body to be rigid because sometimes you need to others what will happen your hand will just fall right so the fascia can also keep the rigidity but if you do this for too long can issues can arise okay so this thing actually extends throughout the body it's everywhere and it migrates and it moves it's all over it just it can it can move uh, throughout your body it's kind of you know it it just moves okay and there's of course there is a there is a way and a methodology by which the body will move it around so not only is this moving through your body it is also involved with the immune system and you'll you'll wonder is it really part of my immune system you know whenever you get a flu you'll find that your muscles feel sore okay so it is actually participating in its attack uh and you know fighting fending itself off from a lot of things so even in those stages your muscles will start to feel sore so it is involved even in the battle against disease of course it also helps you attain balance okay because because of that i told you know that spongy and that springy effect you know the minute balances that you require uh sometimes when you are walking and probably there's an uneven surface you actually don't know it you just subconsciously just get on with life because it's able to give you that tolerance so that you don't actually for a half a degree you just don't lose your you know it's suddenly fall okay so it's extremely important and it gives you the the coordination that you require okay so it is an extremely important uh, part of your body now now we can get into problems with the fascia so 
how do we detect these diseases? How do we, not exactly disease, how do we detect these problems? The first thing is when you have body stiffness. Okay? You know, suddenly you're feeling, oh, my hand's neck is not really moving, my hand is, oh, my back is a little, you know, that stiffness. Now, this problem occurs when you have very little movement. You have a very sedentary life and you're sitting on like a couch potato for most of the day. Or you you know, and you don't do any, you don't even walk. And uh, if you have very little movement, a lot of people as they get older, sometimes you'll see them, they'll be just sitting in their chair or, you know, they just, they'll be in a single posture. Now, when you do this, what happens is the collagen gets hard. Okay? And sometimes you think, oh, I've got, you know, stiff muscle, I got a catch, you know. It most likely is that your collagen has got hard. Okay? So just remember that. And remember that this fascia is connected right from your head to your toe. Okay? And uh, there is a kind of a connectivity throughout the body. So the lower half, uh, let's say your right arm is paining. What you might want to do is, and you can actually give a massage to your left leg, your left calf, if you give a massage, it actually starts to invigorate uh, the problem that you might have in your right shoulder. Of course, you definitely need to go to an experienced, uh, you know, chiropractor or somebody who knows how to do this really well and who knows the science well can actually give you quite a great amount of relief. But the point is what I'm trying to tell you is that it is all connected, okay? And in whatever fashion, just like, you know, your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere of your brain, there are a lot of things in your body that also follow this kind of opposite uh, hemisphere kind of pattern. And here's one of it. So uh, you'll find that uh, a lot of acupuncture and acupressure also kind of lends itself to problems that, you know, be massaging your foot, but actually, you know, you maybe your, uh, maybe your right shoulder is paining or something like that. Or maybe you have a toothache. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of this connectivity. And you must also remember that this fascia is monitored by the nerves. The nerves actually know which part of the fascia is in which part of the body. So there is also a kind of an addressing mechanism to know where it is. But it's not so tightly connected, uh, you know, much like your brain. But it is connected and there is it gets the sensory uh, readings from where the fascia is. So it, the body knows where it is. And of course, this all happens subconsciously uh, or unconsciously rather. And your body doesn't have your your... Conscious mind doesn't know what's going on. This is all happening in the background. So, how do you keep this going? How do you make sure you're not going to get into too many problems? Okay, one thing is it's good to have in case you get you know any stiffness, uh, you can do some massage therapy. You can get some therapy via massage, and you may want to go to a you know, chiropractor who actually knows which part of the body to go and you know compress and and massage and whatever. But even a general massage therapy is a good. A way to kind of help keep your fascia in a little more, not get get too hardened. Okay. Now, when you're exercising, you know, this is a common problem. People follow one type of exercise and say, Oh, I'm exercising. Like they'll only do jogging or they'll only do cycling. So what happens is when you do this, you're exercising only a certain part of your muscle. And a certain part of it is completely idle. So what happens? If that part which is idle is going to start getting stiff. So you've got to have a lot more dynamic motion. So give you, you know, here's some couple of... So maybe you might be doing something funny like touching your toes in the air. Uh, you might just suddenly want to do squats. You may want to do, uh, you know, uh, sideways rotating. So try and keep, uh, you know, a lot of motion, uh, a lot of dynamic motion. That's why... Playing a sport is a lot better because it's unpredictable. You have to move maybe a different muscle at a different time. And that's why a sport, an active sport, is uh, it doesn't have to be tennis. It can be something as easy as table tennis. Okay? Uh, or maybe if you're better than that, you definitely want to, you know, somebody's good at playing tennis or basketball or something. Great. You can also try various types of strokes while you're swimming. Okay? Don't just only do the freestyle. You can do a backstroke, you can do a butterfly. If you don't know it, just try it. You know, it's uh, you don't have to be an expert at it, but just try and 
confuse or not really confuse try not to have something that's monotonous you know try to move uh, in different angles and different directions uh, now do i have to do this every day and so maybe one day you're doing sit ups uh you know and uh, maybe the next day you won't do sit ups maybe you'll do uh, you know maybe you'll do hula hoop or something you know so kind of have a variety of exercises and try to be dynamic in its motion and since it is a little hard to make a regime out of it playing a sport becomes you know you don't have to think about what exercise to do okay warm ups are very important so don't forget to do warm ups uh, whenever you do this so i have uh, put a couple of links here uh, in in uh, in this uh, ppt so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to share this in the risk of losing the photos and videos from your phone this innovative device makes it easy to back up your smart okay, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to the first one that i have here i'm going to share it in the chat Okay, so just hang on a second. Let me find out where my Zoom is. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll also leave these links. Uh, uh, you know, when you watch the record, see this. If you're not watching this live, and you want to watching the recording, I'll definitely keep. Uh, I'll keep some of this up. Thanks a lot for being here. I hope you found this uh, informative, and. Uh, if there are any questions or anything that you'd like to know, uh, just remember that people who follow the dynamic vitality model are the ones that are going to have the last laugh and the other ones are always going to be the ones that are triumphing when this is going on.